Welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to talk about how to travel London like a local. So before starting, please like this video, and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Westminster Abbey, The Tower, Buckingham Palace, and Big Ben are among the well-known landmarks in London. But don't allow the splendor of those vistas to blind you to the city's other attractions. Following the Roman era, London was little more than a collection of settlements that the city gradually absorbed over the years. As a result, the city has numerous centers, each with its distinct flavor. It's worthwhile to venture beyond the conventional tourist traps to learn more about this vibrant and sophisticated metropolis. Notting Hill and Portobello Road. Many Londoners like spending a Saturday browsing the stalls at Portobello Market in Notting Hill's gentrified, avant-garde neighborhood. The market is several markets rolled into one, with sections dedicated to food, used items, and vintage clothing and fashion. The Saturday Antique Market, however, is the main attraction. Hundreds of sellers provide an Aladdin's cave of goods. Silver, clocks, coins, vinyl albums, vintage lace, furniture, art, porcelain, crystal, cameras. The list goes on for half a mile of crowded stalls and arcades. If you simply want to avoid the crowds, a Sunday stroll through Notting Hill is ideal. Without the market stalls and throng, it's easier to appreciate the location. Classic London townhouses with pillared porches, stucco fronts, and wrought iron balconies adorn the streets, giving the area a bohemian feel. When arranging your trip, keep in mind that the Notting Hill Carnival, which takes place every August, attracts over a million people. Steel drums, flamboyantly costumed dancers, and spicy street food highlight the area's strong West Indian history. Bloomsbury and the British Library the majestic homes in the garden squares provide a welcome relief from the city's bustle. The amount of green space in the city as a whole, and Bloomsbury in particular, will astound you. These well-kept parks are crisscrossed by paths and feature well-kept grass sprinkled with trees and the occasional statue. They offer a peaceful location for a picnic lunch, people watching, or simply a pit stops on your route somewhere else. You'll recall languid afternoons spent in Bloomsbury Square, Russell Square, and Tavistock Square. You also don't have to worry about getting thwacked smack the head with an errant ball, thanks to park regulations prohibiting playing sports. The tour concludes in the British Library, the UK's National Library, and the world's second largest library. It's also unsightly from the exterior, a dreadful red brick structure that resembles a brutalist boot factory. Inside, however, one of London's best-kept secrets is the permanent exhibit at the Sir John Ritblatt Treasures Room. An original copy of the Magna Carta, a copy of Shakespeare's first folio, Da Vinci sketches, and handwritten lyrics by John Lennon on the back of his son's birthday card are among the treasures in the collection. Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club in Soho. Soho, pulsing with vitality and buzzing with nightlife, is the place to go for nighttime entertainment. Hundreds of restaurants, taverns and bars serving cuisines from all over the world give birth to Britain's latest food trends. Restaurants rise and fall with the tides of fashion, so make reservations early or plan to wait in a lengthy queue if you want to eat somewhere trendy. Downstairs is one of the world's oldest jazz clubs, with a stellar lineup of musicians. Visitors who are interested in attending should purchase tickets in advance. For impromptu evenings out, Hampstead. Hampstead Heath, also known as Simply, the Heath, by locals, is only a short tube journey from central London. The undulating hills and venerable trees of this enormous park, which is more than 1,000 years old, feel fairly wild in comparison to the manicured lawns of other metropolitan parks. A trip up Parliament Hill in the park rewards you with a panoramic view of the city that has long been cherished by Londoners. Three swimming ponds, as well as cafes, sports fields, and a zoo, are located on the Heath. Hampstead Village, a district famed for its liberal humanism, cultural legacy, and, nowadays, an unusual number of millionaires, is close by. If you get hungry, visit one of the very traditional pubs, such as the Hollybush, which was recently converted from gaslighting. You'll be close enough to visit Keats House, a museum dedicated to the life of the romantic poet, after lunch. Beyond the Tube, Better Ways to Get Around the Tube, formerly known as the London Underground, is the most prevalent mode of transportation for inhabitants and visitors alike, despite its complex map being a little overwhelming at first. It's popular for a reason, it's quick, cheap, and thorough. 
An Oyster card is a pay-as-you-go smart card that can be used on the tube and many other public transit options. You can even order one ahead of time and have it delivered. When you just zoom underground from one station to the next, though, it might be difficult to acquire a feel of the city's geography. Especially because the tube map isn't drawn to scale, and stops that appear to be far apart may be only around the corner, and vice versa. Because it is a largely underground method of transportation, you will miss out on glimpses of the city as you go. Mini Cooper Tour A private tour in a Mini Cooper is a fantastic opportunity to gain a sense of the city's layout and visit several of the city's most prominent landmarks in one go, all while avoiding the crowds. One of my passengers was a fan of guerrilla art, so our driver took us to view a Banksy piece nestled away in a tunnel. The River Thames the Thames was the city's first major highway, and it remains a wonderful means to get around in a world of trains, planes, and automobiles. River buses connect piers quickly and frequently, and you can pay with Oyster Card. River cruises include hop-on, hop-off excursions, narrated sightseeing tours, and afternoon tea cruises, among others. The Royal Observatory, the Prime Meridian, and the National Maritime Museum are all famous attractions in Greenwich. Taking a boat, on the other hand, transforms a need into a pleasurable experience. As you pass by, you'll get a bird's-eye perspective of some of London's most iconic structures, including the tower. Through Traitor's Gate, a large number of prisoners entered the tower, many of whom would never escape. St. Paul's Cathedral. Visitors frequently visit St. Paul's Whispering Gallery. However, if you have a good head for heights, you should continue to the Golden Gallery, which is two stories higher. It's a fantastic viewpoint that can help you forget about cathedral fatigue. Westminster and Parliament. The press of tour groups and protesters often makes Parliament Square a hectic scene, making it difficult to enjoy the majesty of the surrounding structures. Instead, take a stroll along the South Bank's Esplanade. You can get a clear view of Parliament and Big Ben's Elizabeth Tower, especially at night, without having to avoid selfie sticks and furious banners. Monument to the Great Fire of London. This tall Doric column was designed by Christopher Wren and Robert Hooke, and d it still affords spectacular views of London more than 300 years later. A panoramic view of the Tower Bridge, the Gherkin, and the Cheese Grater is available after a 311-step journey up a tight spiral stair. Other excellent views. The top level of Tate Modern Switch House is an open viewing gallery with views of the city. The Millennium Bridge, which connects the Tate Modern and St. Paul's Cathedral across the Thames, was designed expressly to frame the cathedral's south façade between its supports. This scene, which contrasts the contemporary steel and glass bridge with the Baroque stone church, embodies the city's essence for me. Art at night. London is home to a plethora of museums. As well as museum visitors. There are, thankfully, methods to escape the school groups and dense clusters that tend to congregate around popular works. Many of the city's museums and galleries feature late opening hours for adults only one day a week, especially during the summer. Evenings frequently include discussions, workshops, performances, as well as food and beverages. The British Museum, the Royal Academy of Art, and the National Gallery, for example, are all open late on Fridays. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go and also press the bell icon so that you can get notification about our new videos. If it was helpful then share it with others. Thanks for watching the video.